So, um, Sandro, as a realtor in the industry, I hear a lot of uh, people talking about builders cutting corners and and a lot of shady practices. Like, I don't know if it's the mm. truth or is it just myth? Or, um, why don't you can you elaborate on that and why if if they do cut corners or are they just cutting corners or reducing costs or maybe you can share a little bit about that? Yeah, that's uh, you know that there's a lot of levels to that to that question. Um, you know, you hear cutting corners. Uh, typically, you know, there, there, there seems to be a wide range of, uh, say, you know, let's use a price per square foot as mm -hmm. an example. Um, you know, here in the Vancouver market, um, there's, uh, there, <laughs> there shouldn't be a, a huge range in there, but there is. And typically you'll find that guys are actually cutting corners or that the customer doesn't want, you know, doesn't want to or thinks that they're getting great quality for for this low price that they somehow mm -hmm. found a builder that'll do for them for an unrealistic price, and and they have to. There, there's no because they can't. They have to. All mm -hmm. the products that they're using have to be on the lower end of it, mm -hmm. and um, you know so they'll just you know just they'll just kind of fudge it and make it through the building, um, you know the the, um, the inspections, and they'll just kind of make it through all these all these. Uh, uh, points but uh, you know the quality is not there and they have to cut corners because you know that pricing is so low that there's no other way you know that you can do it without cutting corners so give me an example of where a, a client who who pays uh, a really low price per square foot to a builder um, which areas uh, do does that builder would be with where would they be typically cutting corners in well I'm going to start right off the bat with tradespeople Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, there's uh, there's there's no there's no real policing system for tradespeople. So mm -hmm. you could um, you know you know there's there's a wide range of tradespeople. Right. Where where you go from a, a tradesperson to a craftsman, and there's typically a, a price that you'll pay. Is a guy running his business properly? Do, you know, is he up to date on his WCB? Does he have liability? You know, mm -hmm. um, those things. Those are all operating costs that affect the overall price of what he's going to be charging to do whatever part of that job he needs to do. Um, so if and I know this from uh, you know from from watching some of these guys that they don't have all those kind of systems in place, mm -hmm. so therefore their costs are a lot lower to operate. Right, the guys that they have working with them are not, not necessarily. There's no policing there, so they can hire just about anybody, and, and they can, hey, do this or whatever we need mm -hmm. to do, and that again, you know, your price becomes lower because the guys aren't really qualified to do it but there's one guy that may know what he's doing on the site and the rest of the guys have no idea mm. so the wages are a lot lower um you know so that's 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 a probably one of the most ones where they start cutting the corners is the guys that they're using um you know to put that home together um and then we go into uh you know the materials that you're using mm -hmm. you know um let's say the foundation Mm. Um, typically, uh, you know, say a 20 MPA mix, which is a you know a lower grade foundation mix, is a lot of guys. So it, again, it's it's a lower grade mix. It's less money. People have no idea that, that a lot of these builders are using uh, you know 20 MPA concrete when we use at least 25 MPA to 30 MPA on a foundation, mm. you know, and a better mix, uh, uh, you know, better stronger mix on that. Again, it's going to cost you more money to do that, but those you're going beyond the code as when we do it, because I don't think that, that is, that's good enough. I've, I've mm -hmm. seen what they look like and they're not great, but the average person would never know. And you wouldn't even think about asking that question uh, for, most, uh, you know, for most people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then it just goes from there. Uh, you, you know, your, say your dimensional lumber, if you're using your plate material, you know, uh, what we use the pressure treated material on the bottom plates on our right. homes. What does that mean? Uh, well, on top of your foundation, typically yeah. there's there's uh, say dimensional lumber. It'll be a two by six typically, okay. and uh, anything that's close to concrete, I like to use uh, pressure treated material. Pressure, yeah, treated. pressure treated. Okay, okay. Yeah, so Which it, it means it's stronger. Well, it's it's not stronger, but it, oh, okay. it's 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 uh, you know for rot insects and and, okay. and and decay in that way. And if it gets wet, it doesn't start to rot out oh, and stuff. Okay. You okay. know, so it's close to the foundation where there's a little bit of moisture there. I like to use pressure treated on 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 that aspect of yeah. it and areas that might have a little bit of moisture problems. Um, you know, and again, pressure treated material is more money. So trace people, um, the materials. And um, I guess, well, that, it, what other, is that, are those the two main areas where we're cutting corners, we're kind of... Uh, yeah, occur? well, yeah, because that's where you're really, that, that's the two basic components of mm -hmm. home. Thanks guys for watching my video. Please subscribe and share with your friends. Email me if you have any more questions. Thank you.